Happy holidays, folks, and welcome to the final episode of Hashtag Ask GSM in 2022. I am Graham GSM Matthews for episode 474 here today, Wednesday, December 28th, 2022. Hope you guys are doing well and having a great holiday week. We had Christmas Eve and Christmas this past weekend. We got New Year's Eve and New Year's Day this coming week, and a lot going on right now, but we are going to close out 2022 with a major episode here today. A lot of great questions from Facebook, from Twitter, from YouTube. If you want to send in a question to the show in the new year and beyond, you could do so by tweeting me on the Twitter machine at WrestleRant with the hashtag AskGSM. Find me on Facebook as well, facebook.com backslash graham.gsm.matthews. Drop a comment on the post they usually put up on Tuesday nights, if not on the wall itself. And last but certainly not least, drop your question down below in the comment section on this very video. I'll include your question in next week's edition. I appreciate all the questions we got sent in this week. We got a lot of great questions. I'll try to condense it down to as short of an episode as usual, as possible rather, uh, so you guys can go out and enjoy the holiday week and whatnot with all that's going on. Um, so, like I mentioned, we had Christmas this past week. Uh, this coming up week, we got a lot going on here on the channel specifically. Um, tomorrow, we're reviewing the results of the WWE AEW 2022 Year in Review Awards, the 10th annual over on WrestleRant.com. If you didn't vote, the polls are probably closed or will be soon by the time you listen to this. Uh, they close today. At any set time, I have no idea. It's at whatever time I want to close them. So if you haven't already voted, please do so. We are breaking down the results, revealing the results, reviewing the results on WrestleRant Radio tomorrow. Those excerpts will be up tomorrow here on the channel. On Friday, most likely, either on Friday, Saturday's probably a SmackDown audio review. Sunday's probably a SmackDown Lowdown review. I haven't watched the Ric Flair doc yet. I did say I was going to watch it and review it for Tuesday. Didn't have time, so I'll probably break that down for early next week. Friday will very likely be my movie review, my 2022 movie review with John Ritland at Reborn Again on Twitter and here on YouTube as well. Real Honesty with John Ritland sent in great questions this week, as he does almost every week. He's awesome. Uh, John and I talked for... Three hours, two hours on recording yesterday, as I speak right now, about the year in movies from stuff that you probably saw, definitely did see, maybe stuff you definitely did not see, uh, the best, the worst, the ugly, the good, the bad, and the ugly of movies in 2022, what we're looking forward to in 2023, and so much more. So uh, that was a great convo. That's probably going to drop on Friday if I can render the video before then. So keep an eye out for that. And um, yeah, I know maybe not on Friday, actually. I take that back. Maybe on maybe on Sunday, because Friday actually here on the channel, I completely forgot about this, another cheap plug, my interview with WWE Raw superstar Kevin Owens ahead of the SmackDown match coming up on Friday, him and John Cena coming back to SmackDown, a team with Owens against Roman Reigns and Sami Zayn. I spoke to Owens about a week ago, so the interview goes up in video form here on the channel on Friday morning and on Bleacher Report uh, that same day, 8 a.m. Eastern time in article form as well. So be sure to check that out. Um, great conversation. Owens is fucking awesome. So I really enjoyed our first chat two years ago. And uh, we'll have another chat round two on Friday. So a lot to look forward to right now. A uh, lot of plugs, a lot of promotion. Let's get that all out of the way and move on to the questions. Uh, so let's start with the YouTube questions first. Uh, Central Man Network for the first question of the final episode of 2022. Are any superhero film? Are, are there any superhero films rather that you're looking forward to in 2023? Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to, I think Shazam 2 comes out next year, I believe, if that hasn't been bumped or canceled. Um, that's coming out from DC. For Marvel, probably everything. I mean, the first two that come to mind are the next two, that being Ant-Man and the Wasp, uh, Quantumania, that comes out in February. Super pumped for that. And then obviously Guardians. Guardians is my favorite Marvel franchise. Um, I love the first movie, one of my favorite movies of all time. Love the second one. Love the holiday special that came out recently. So I'm looking forward to that third movie that comes out on May 5th, the exact day that the second one came out in 2017. What are the fucking odds of that? So that's pretty cool. Um, looking forward to that. Definitely going to go see that. Not sure what other movies are out next year. I know DC has a few more movies out next year, but Loki Season 2 isn't a movie. You said films, but that's a show. Um, Loki Season 2 I'm looking forward to, so... I'm, I'm, I'm at least looking forward to those movies. Oh, and also on the Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse movie as well. Um, Across the Spider-Verse or whatever it's called, the, the second one. The first one was from four years ago, which was great. Um, I saw that soon after it came out. And now the new one actually comes out on my birthday, June 2nd. 
So I might actually go see a movie on my birthday, I think for the first time ever. So um, that should be fun. I look forward to that. And uh, yeah, a lot of good movies to look forward to in 2023. Cade Brown, Cade B, his question was, uh, Legends alumni that you want in the 2023 Men's Rumble. I think I've answered this before, but uh, I think we'll get Great Muda in there. That would be pretty cool. I'm not sure if he's ever had like a televised match for WWE, WWF, WWWF, whatever. Um, I don't think so. I might be thinking of Jushin Thunder Liger. I don't know if he ever has. So if he's in the Rumble, that'd be pretty cool on his retirement tour right now. I'll talk more about my predictions for 2023 coming up soon. Um, I usually get asked every single year, oh, what are your bold predictions for 2023? And I never have anything written down because I'm not good at the predictions at all. But I actually have a few, not some not so bold predictions. Most of them are not so bold. Um, but I'll probably have those, uh, you know, I have them actually written down. I will give them out a little bit later on. So I came prepared this year. Um, but Legends alumni I want in the Rumble. You know, honestly, I've always said this, and I don't know how many people would care. Fucking Mr. Kennedy in a Rumble, I think, would be awesome. Because I feel like we've gotten all the other, not ruthless aggression, but like late 2000 era returns in WWE. John Morrison came back. Not in the Rumble, but he came back and, you know, he had his one final run. MVP got his big pop at the 2020 Rumble. Carlito I feel bad for because he didn't get that pop because there were no fans of the 2021 Rumble. But, you know, he came back, and that was awesome. He looked fantastic at the 2021 Men's Rumble. Um, I feel like we've gotten a lot of those, you know, mid, late, ruthless aggression era returns in the last 10 years. Um, Shelton Benjamin came back for a run. He's still back now, obviously. But we still haven't gotten Mr. Kennedy. Now, I know he's probably out of shape. He runs his own wrestling school now. I actually met him in person. I met him in person before, but I met up with him again I'm at WrestleCon, actually, about a year ago, uh, earlier this year, rather, and uh, he was super cool. I would love to see Kennedy come back. I don't know how big of a reaction he would get, but I feel like that'd be pretty cool to see Mr. Kennedy back in WWE one final time. Um, You know, Punk, obviously, would be like the ultimate um, because, you know, he might be free. I I doubt he would be free by that point. I doubt it. So uh, people have always said, oh, Punk Rumble return. He already went back to AEW, but it would still be cool. Yeah, I don't really know. I'm, I'm trying to think of like other legends and other returns and stuff like that. Um, returns to the company. You know, Sasha would have been cool, but I feel like she's obviously not coming back to WWE. That's probably not happening. I've heard Kyrie's name thrown around. She would be pretty sweet. You said for the men's rumble, but that would be for the women's, obviously. Kyrie would be cool. Yeah, I'm not really sure. Um, those are a few of the names that come to mind. I feel like we've already gotten the Godfathers a bunch, and Rikishi hasn't been in a return, hasn't had a Rumble return, but he's been in the Rumble, and he's been back a few different times. The Rock is obviously an option, uh, which, you know, I hope he doesn't win the Rumble, but I could see that happening. Uh, I'm not exactly sure. Those are, like, the main ones. Those are the main ones. I'm not really sure who else would make sense, or like, there's probably a lot more people than I'm even thinking of right now for like dream rumble returns, and those sometimes end up being like the best ones, so uh, yeah, those are a few names I just threw out at you, so we'll see if any of them actually come to fruition. Nike only, from YouTube as well, if you had only one choice for a forbidden door entrant in the 2023 Royal Rumble, who would you pick and why? That's a great question as well. Honestly, at this point, going off of Cade's question, I would rather see more forbidden door entrants in the Rumble than, like, you know, I mean, you say alumni, but, like, legends, I'm good on, like, a fucking godfather return, like, I'm all set, another Kevin Nash return, no thanks, um, X-Pac, I will say, actually, I wanted him in the Rumble earlier this year, it didn't happen, RVD would also be cool, he's already made a Rumble return, so it wouldn't exactly be, you know, fresh, but it's been a long time, so I feel like that would be cool as well, but, um, uh, X-Pac, definitely. X-Pac for a Rumble return should absolutely happen. I honestly kind of expect it to happen because, and I'll talk about other, you know, Rumble entrants I want to see, like, uh, and I won't mention it here, but I have a prediction for who I want to see in the Rumble a little bit later on uh, when I get to my 2023 bold predictions. But X-Pac, I feel like it's pretty likely now that Triple H is in charge. Uh, as far as, like, Forbidden Door stuff, though, that's really what I want to see because I feel like one of the highlights of the Women's Rumble earlier this year was seeing Mickie James come out with the Impact Women's Knockouts title, and then also um, coming out with their Impact theme music, which I thought was pretty fucking awesome. So I know it was like on a small scale, it was for the Women's Rumble, but still, Mickey's a big name. I thought it was cool. They acknowledged Impact. She came out with the belt. That was really, really cool. I feel like the ultimate Forbidden Door entrant, and at a, at a Royal Rumble, that crowd would definitely know who he is, and Okada. 
I feel like that'd be pretty fucking cool. Like, you could say Moxley or Jericho or anyone in AEW right now. You know, like a Kenny Omega or like a Punk, I could see people saying. But, you know, Punk, I feel like could be back at some point. Anyway, uh, Okada may never be in WWE. Just for him to come in to do a one-off, I feel like would be fucking awesome. Um, You know, they're not really working with New Japan. They kind of are for the Carl Anderson thing. I don't know if... uh, Letting Carl work New Japan and then getting Okada in return for the Rumble is exactly a fair trade. Carl Anderson is no Okada, but that would still be pretty fucking cool because it's like I know he has to come in and lose. And the thing with that, I think I think we're getting Okada and Jay White right at Wrestle Kingdom, so he would probably by that point be IWGP champion. Jay White's another one, but you know I don't know how many people would actually react to that. It would be cool, but not as cool as Okada coming in with the music and everything would be fucking sexy. Uh, I feel like it's more possible under Triple H than it would have been under Vince, because Vince was like probably had no idea who Okada was. Um, by that point, he'll probably be IWGP Heavyweight Champion. Would they have him in the Rumble just to lose? Probably not. You have to think about it that way as well. They they take that stuff very seriously, does New Japan. But still, it is uh, fun to fantasize about. Micah does it. Uh, says, on this past episode of SmackDown, Michael Cole said that John Cena was the greatest of all time, and I agree with this statement. What do you think, in your opinion, uh, is Cena the GOAT, or is it somebody else? Obviously, it's subjective. Um, no, I don't think Cena is the greatest of all time. If you debate that, argue that, think that, believe that, I will not debate you on that. Um, I don't think it's a stupid argument to have. I can see why people would see him as the GOAT, and maybe one day I would agree. My mind probably changes depending on the day. Off the top of my head, if you had to tell me or ask me who is the GOAT of professional wrestling, I would probably say Stone Cold Steve Austin. Was he a better wrestler than Shawn Michaels? No. And that's another one, too. I would probably put Stone Cold and Shawn above Cena. Because Stone Cold, more people know Cena now due to the stuff he's doing in mainstream and in movies. But in the wrestling business, no one created a bigger buzz around the product in a, such a short span of time than Stone Cold Steve Austin. And people still fantasize about the Attitude Era and the impact he had. Yeah, Cena's had overall better, more matches, way more titles. That's because he was around for 20 years. Stone Cold didn't have that great elongated run. But people still, he comes out and still gets a thunderous, monstrous reaction, as does Cena. But Cena, I'm sorry, is no Stone Cold Steve Austin. Just because he's around for 20 years and Stone Cold was only around in the ring for like five doesn't make Cena better than Stone Cold necessarily. There's a lot of factors. You can include box office draws and shit like that. Cena was also the biggest star at a time where they didn't have as big of stars as they did in the Attitude Era. You have to remember that too. Cena was on top when Edge was here, Batista, Taker. I'm not taking anything away from that. But you have to remember, Stone Cold was on top when they still had The Rock. They still had The Undertaker, Triple H, Kane, Shawn Michaels, Bret Hart, among others. He was uh, on, on top over all of those people. Uh, when any one of those guys could be could have been the guy in WWE. So I still say Stone Cold. You could also argue either Bret Hart or um, Shawn Michaels just due to them being better in the ring than Stone Cold and having more classics. And, you know, people are not going to, like, obviously Stone Cold got a lot of people into wrestling and made them fans and whatnot. But there's not a lot of people, I don't think, that'll say, oh, Stone Cold was the one that made me, Want to become a want to become a professional wrestler due to his great matches. I feel like Shawn, uh, Shawn Michaels and Bret Hart are the two that really inspired people. Like, hey, I think I can do this, and, and inspired that whole next generation that we saw ten years ago, five years ago. Now, now I feel like it's like the Punks and the Bryans and people like that because uh, it's been so long that they've been on top. But I would probably say Stone Cold or Shawn. There's a lot more that goes into it. We can make a whole video about it. Cena would be up there. You could also say Hogan. I mean, the guy is professional wrestling in many ways, whether you like it or not. I don't know if I would go with Hogan, personally, um, but you would probably have to put Hogan, Cena, Stone Cold, and Shawn Michaels in that conversation, as well as Bret Hart, um, The Rock, I could see, but I would still probably go either Shawn or Stone Cold Steve Austin, personally. My answer might change tomorrow, like I said. Uh, Next question from Micah Does It as well. What was your favorite feud of the year? Good question. Um, <sighs> favorite feud of the year. Either Punk and MJF had a great feud. Some of that stretched into 2021, though. So that's the tough thing. It didn't entirely take place this year. So either Punk and MJF 
or Rhodes and Rollins. I'd probably go Punk and MJF just due to the promos. Rhodes and Rollins had better matches overall. Those matches were amazing. Mania, Mania Backlash, Hell in the Cell, great story. Cody won all three times. None of this 50-50, I win one, you win one bullshit. He won all three matches, including one with a torn peck at Hell in the Cell. So um, I'd still probably go Punk and MJF with Rhodes and Rollins being a close second. Uh, FTR and the Briscoes, there wasn't really a feud because they never really had any TV segments. They just had matches due to the circumstances surrounding the Briscoes and AEW and whatnot. But um, yeah, that would also be another great trilogy from this year. Just phenomenal matches across the board. I'm trying to think of other feuds. I know I did a whole category in my year in review awards of best feuds. Uh, those would probably be them, though. Roman and Brock also had a great feud, too. Again, that really stretched into 2021 as well, so I wouldn't go with that. But they also had a great feud going into WrestleMania. The match itself and Mania disappointed, but the feud itself was great, to be fair. And the SummerSlam match they had was also amazing, so um, I got to give that an honorable mention as well. Last question from YouTube, from Nike only. I saw a rumor that in 2023, WWE could push Montez Ford hard as a single star, and he could potentially win the WWE Championship next year. What do you think of this happening for Ford next year? It could happen. By that point, hopefully, we get two separate titles. I don't think he's beating Roman Reigns for the championship, um, but it could happen. Ford is awesome. Hopefully, by that point, he does have a standard singles run. I would not rush into Montez Ford, though, being a world champion. Montez Ford winning Money in the Bank would be amazing and all, but I feel like he hasn't even gotten his feet wet as a single star. He's had singles matches with a lot of top names and even beaten some of those top names. He's had matches with Rollins and Roman, among others, but he hasn't even had a singles run yet. Let him have a run as a baby phase, as a heel, whatever, in the mid card, and then slowly work his way up to main event status. He's not a guy you need to rush on now. He can definitely, they can definitely take their time with him. So that's what I would like to say. Uh, I would like to see him get a serious singles push by this time next year for sure. And I think that's going to happen. Do I think he'll be world champion by next year? No, I don't. I feel like that'd be too soon. Is it possible? Sure. I do feel like it's too soon though. Um, Let's see. We'll go to the Facebook questions next. Uh, First from Noel, what would be your top five best slash worst movies of 2022? Uh, We did a whole podcast about that on uh, here on the channel actually. Uh, For Friday, like I said, for Friday, me and John Ritland broke down all the movies we saw in 2022, streaming, mostly theatrical stuff, everything that he's seen. He had a great list. We talked for almost two hours about it on air, so uh, that comes out soon. I said Friday, but probably over the weekend, if not early next week, so keep an eye out for that, but um, yeah, so I mean, off the top of my head, I've mentioned this before. I'll keep it quick, and I saw The Whale the other day, so The Whale would be my new number one. I fucking love that movie, so... In this order, for best, it would be The Whale, Bullet Train, Glass Onion, Knives Out 2, uh, Violent Night, and Wakanda Forever. And then for my worst movies, I'm not really overly critical of movies that I watch. Uh, This includes streaming, because I really couldn't think of, like, man, this movie was awful. I thought Scream 6 sucked. I was not a fan of it at all. I thought the movie was awful. Um, I could see why people liked it, especially if you like the horror movie stuff and like the Scream movies. I didn't like it at all. I thought it was stupid. Uh, that and Morbius was very bad. It was so bad it was entertaining, but it was still bad nonetheless, as well as, um, what was it? They Slash Them. I watched that on Peacock a couple months ago with Alexis ahead of Halloween, and it fucking sucked. So those would be my best and worst movies of the year, but like I said, check out the full podcast with John and I coming out at some point in the next week or so, uh, breaking down all the major movies of 2022. Their next question, your top five predictions for wrestling in 2023. Oh, here we go. My predictions for 2023. I'll give you a few more than five, actually, because this is what I have written down. I'm not saying these are bold. Don't get me wrong. These are just my predictions. One, Sasha Banks wrestles for AEW. Not even necessarily signs there. I could see her wrestling a match there, but not necessarily signing. I don't think she even needs to. I could definitely see her signing. That's very likely. Um... If she is indeed gone from WWE, what she gonna like? Where is she gonna wrestle full time? It's not gonna be fucking Impact, but it would be cool to see her at least have a match in AEW if she's not gonna sign there. Do I, though, regardless of whether she signs or not, I will not say that for a fact. She will definitely have a match there. Um, I think FTR leaves AEW. Uh, all the podcast excerpts I see coming out of this Dax Harwood podcast in the last day or two make me believe this guy just doesn't give a fuck and he's on his way out. 
They already lost the Ring of Honor Tag Team titles. I assume they lose the New Japan Tag Titles or Wrestle Kingdom. And I guess there was also the belief they will soon be losing their AAA Tag Team titles. So, which should have happened a while ago because they never did fucking defend the thing. So, um, yeah, I think they're on their way out of AEW. Not necessarily going back to WWE immediately, but I could see them taking time off or being free agents for a while before going back to WWE in 2024. That's my prediction. I see as far as Rumble entrance, I mentioned this earlier, Great Muda, before going into the Hall of Fame, I feel like that's almost, not like a guarantee, but I do see Muda being in the Rumble if they're allowing him to face Shinsuke in uh, his promotion coming up on New Year's Day. So I could see Muda in the Rumble before being inducted into the Hall of Fame over Mania Weekend. Uh, X-Pac as well being in the Rumble, I feel like is a lock. Uh, As far as other entrants, Wade Barrett and or Pat McAfee, I feel like would be awesome. Barrett's been back on SmackDown now as a commentator for a few months. He's great. He hasn't had a single match since returning to WWE two years ago. I don't know if he's wrestled at all since leaving WWE in 2016. It's been six or seven years. But for a one-off Rumble return, I feel like that'd be cool. Um, Here are the old Bad News Barrett music. He comes out or maybe stands up from the commentary table. Maybe that's where Pat McAfee makes his return. Pat McAfee being in the Rumble would be awesome. We already had Bad Bunny in there. We've had a few other people in the Rumble. Corey Graves would be cool as well. Uh, Pat McAfee coming back in the Rumble would be awesome. So uh, one of those two. I do not think The Rock will wrestle at WrestleMania 39. That is my bold prediction. I do not think he will wrestle. I think he could appear, maybe even be a special guest referee. I don't think he's going to wrestle. That's just my mindset at this point. It has been for a while. I've been given no indication Not that I'm an insider, but I have no inkling and idea whether he will wrestle or not. Just all signs to me point to him not wrestling, because at this point I feel like it'd be confirmed. It's just, we're getting way too fucking close. I know WrestleMania is not next month, but it's like, if he's going to be in the top title match, we kind of need to know soon if he's going to be there or not, at least to wrestle. So I don't think he's going to wrestle. I think WWE signs Casey Navarro. Um, Kylie Ray was on the main event taping. I don't know if he's officially signed or not. I thought it was weird. She was at the tryout. They put her on main event. We've heard nothing about her since. I feel like she's a lock to sign. Casey Navarro, they would be fucking foolish not to sign that kid. He is awesome. If you're not aware of him from the time he spent briefly in... He was on AEW Dark a few times. He also wrestled in Impact briefly. Currently in MLW across the Northeast Wrestling Independent Scene as well. Casey Navarro is fantastic. So I feel like they will sign him in the new year. And uh, also, I feel like Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn will indeed win the tag team titles at WrestleMania 39. Again, not a bold prediction, um, but I'm, I would be shocked if that does not actually happen. And No also said, Happy 2023, everyone, and Happy New Year in advance. Happy New Year to you as well. Thank you, as always, for your support of the show. I appreciate it. And uh, yeah, hope everyone has a great New Year. John TK, uh, why? Uh, their question was, what's your prediction of the wrestlers coming out of WrestleMania 2023 as the champion for each division? I mean, that's such a loaded question. I'm not really sure. Uh, for world champions, I think, I mean, it's hard to say. If we get Roman and Rock, then Roman retains it's still champion. I think Roman walks out of Mania, honestly, still champion. I think if Cody faces Roman, they could still have Cody lose. I really don't want that to happen, but... My gut feeling is that Roman walks out of Mania for the third year in a row, still the world champion. So that's my prediction there. I think Bianca will lose the championship to Charlotte or whoever else she faces, especially Rhea. Uh, I think Rhea will walk out as champion if they, unless they do Charlotte. Um, I mean, either either match is possible. I just don't think Bianca walks out as champion. For the SmackDown Women's Division, I have no fucking clue what they're doing. If they're doing Raquel and Ronda now, I don't know what they do at Mania. I, I honestly have no idea. Let's just say Ronda walks out still champion because I have no idea. For the tag titles, I think Owens and Zayn, as they just mentioned a moment ago, will walk out the new tag team champions. Um, the Intercontinental title stuff, I could see Gunther losing the belt before then. I really don't want him to. That would entail him losing to like losing this Strowman before Mania and then facing Lesnar at Mania. Eh, maybe. I don't know. Uh, I'll just say Sheamus walks out Intercontinental Champion. I feel like that's the better story to tell. And then for the U.S. title, who's the U.S. Champion right now? Austin Theory. I'm going to say Johnny Gargano walks out, the new United States Champion. I could totally see that happening. So those are my predictions there. Uh, For the Twitter questions, we get to John at Reborn Again on Twitter. He asks, with Bianca versus Alexa locked in for the first Raw of 2023, could we see a title change or will they have shenanigans to extend the feud to at least the Rumble? Yeah, I think we're going to get an extension into the Rumble. 
Um, it's possible they blow it off here, and then we get, like, Bianca and Rhea at the Rumble. I don't think so, though. Um, I think it's cool they're doing it on the first Raw of the year, but this entire feud, which I've enjoyed for the most part, there's been a lot of shenanigans with Alexa. Is she aligned with Bray? Is she going back to Dark Alexa? Blah, blah, blah. There's a lot of shenanigans there, so... Uh, I feel like we'll get some spooky bullshit nonsense to close out the match. Maybe Bianca retains, Alexa turns heel afterward, she snaps on Bianca, Bianca, want, Bianca wants a rematch, and we get it at the Rumble. I feel like that's very possible. Uh, no, I don't think we'll get a title change, though. I don't think Bianca... I mean, I guess she could lose it to Alexa. I don't think she will. Uh, I don't think Bianca's going to lose it at this point, in my opinion, until WrestleMania. John's second question, could you see AEW deciding to hotshot Danielson versus MJF? for the Dynamite in Seattle. Even if they did a fluke finish, it could lead to a rematch or revolution. Absolutely. Uh, I know you, John, actually were talking about being at the Dynamite in Seattle coming up soon, which is awesome. Um, yeah, I could totally see them doing it there. They've done that before. I mean, we saw it this year with Punk and MJF. Or Punk and, actually, Punk and MJF too, but uh, Punk and Moxley they did on Dynamite before doing the rematch on pay-per-view. They did it twice with Punk this year. I could see them doing it with uh, Danielson and MJF as well in Seattle. So that's totally feasible. Um, at Team Zaluda, uh, his full handle is uh, Team Zaluda 24X, X Team Zaluda 24X, excuse me. Uh, Chris's question was, your prediction for each wrestling company of 2023? Uh, I don't know. It's, it's hard to say. I feel like everyone will do well. I mean, that's a very lame prediction, I know. Uh, it, it's hard to say. I feel like NWA will continue to fall and lose talent. Uh, Impact should hopefully have a solid year. Uh, they're losing more talent. They have to rebound by picking up some new faces or returning talent. Uh, they had a great 2021, or 20, 2021, but also 2022. They lost a lot of their talent in recent months to WWE. They got to get some of that back. Not from WWE, but from elsewhere. Um, let's see. For, you know, I already mentioned NWA. AEW, yeah, I could see them having a rebound year. 2021 was rough for them in a lot of ways. I could see them having a better year next year than they did this year. And MLW will probably still be at the same level they are right now. So I know very generic predictions, but I don't imagine anything. I mean, listen, I probably didn't expect anything major happening this year either for any of the major companies. And we saw major things happening for every single company for the most part. So who the fuck knows? At noob underscore n underscore co TV, what are some bold predictions for 2023? I already answered that earlier. Um, first off, from at Iwagu91, uh, he says, first off, I hope you enjoyed your Christmas. Thank you, at Iwagu. I appreciate you. I hope you enjoyed your Christmas as well. His question was, what are your thoughts on Ricochet and his IC title reign? Uh, it was not a waste of time, but it was very forgettable. I'm glad he got that moment to be Intercontinental Champion, but at a, it came at a terrible time because Vince didn't give a fuck about the title. I know at the time the report was, oh, Ricochet is the second top babyface on the show, which was comical because Ricochet had been a loser for years. He's booked a lot better now that he's not champion than he was as champion. I mean, his title defenses included what? He faced Sammy. He retained against Sammy in a rematch. Cool. He then beat Shanky and Jinder in subsequent rematches. He beat Loth He had a few different title defenses. He faced Los Lotharios, maybe someone else. So he had a couple different successful title defenses. It wasn't entirely bad, but he was a total afterthought. He wasn't even at WrestleMania. Didn't defend the title at WrestleMania. He was basically a placeholder for Gunther, for Gunther to beat him for that belt in June. So it was a pretty mediocre reign. Um, I do wish he had a better reign, but hopefully at some point he will down the road. Um, his next question, do you see Roman Reigns losing the WWE title without being a part of the fall? Now, I've, I've said this before. I've seen people say, oh, we're going to get two title matches at WrestleMania, Universal and WWE. At this point, it's too fucking late. It's too much of a mess. Keep the one title on Roman until he gets beat. I would do it at WrestleMania. Cody wins the Universal Undisputed title at WrestleMania. Splits it the next night on Raw. Gives the Universal title to SmackDown. Keeps the WWE Championship on Raw. It makes the most sense. Just do that shit. To break it up before then, I feel like would be a fucking mess. Um, I, I don't know. I would not do that at all. I feel like that'd be very silly. So I feel like he has to... If he's held both championships for this long... I mean, the WWE won only since Mania, but still... It's still a while. He's got to be pinned. Keep the undisputed title on him until he loses, hopefully soon, and then move on from there. At uh, Cios, let's see, spell it S E O S I T W from Twitter. Five wrestlers who are not in AEW or WWE that had a great year. Ooh, that's a good question. Uh, Josh Alexander had an amazing year. Him and Impact had a great year. Uh, he won the title back from Moose, the world title at Rebellion. 
He was having good matches before that with uh, Jonah. He had a great match with Jonah, I think, in January at the Hard to Kill pay-per-view. And he had a couple good matches after that as well, um, leading into the championship match in April. But he won the title for Moose. That was a great match. The match with Eric Young was really good. He had a very good match with um, Joe Doring. He had a very, very good match with Alex Shelley, uh, Eddie Edwards at Bound for Glory, uh, What's his name? Tomohiro Ishii from New Japan on one of those Impact Plus specials. So he's had a lot of good matches. Uh, He actually just recently faced Kazarian, actually, at Overdrive last month, which was also a great match, and the uh, Speedball Mike Bailey match on Impact a couple of weeks ago. So he's had a great 2022. Beyond them, uh, it's hard to say. No one in NWA really stands out. MLW isn't consistent enough for anyone to really stand out, though Hammerstone was world champion for the entire year. I guess he had a pretty good year. Uh, In Impact, Mike Bailey had a great year. I think he debuted in January, was X-Division champion for a little while. Uh, He's gotten over. He's awesome. You know, Mia Yim went from being fired to WWE to going to Impact for six months, now getting back into into, uh, WWE, which was cool. So I may may include her as well. Uh, I'm trying to think of who else. Like an Impact, NWA, MLW. Those are probably the bigger names that come to mind. I don't know if you would include a Ring of Honor, but uh, yeah, those are, I feel like, are a few of the people that had a great year. I don't really watch New Japan. Uh, Jay, White, uh, Jay White, I know, won the belt back. Will Ospreay, I know, had an amazing year. That's another one, too. Uh, from the matches that I've seen of him, I've seen of him, from him, in various promotions, including AEW, the guy had a great year. Uh, so definitely him as well. Casey Navarro had a good year. So uh, yeah, those, those are a few right there. At Iwagu91, the final question of the year from him. Are you fine with Brian Danielson and Kenny Omega not having a rematch for the entirety of this year? Lastly, I wish you a happy new year. Thank you, at Iwagu. Happy new year as well. Uh, yeah, that's fine. I feel like we will get that rematch at some point. It was the original match was, uh, you know, or, or, wait, wait, the entirety of this. Year. Okay, I'm sorry. I thought you were talking about 2023. You said, am I fine with it not happening this year? That's fine. Yeah, they'll get to it when it, when it, you know, when it needs to happen. Kenny Omega wasn't even around this year. So if you're talking about 2022, Kenny Omega wasn't even around this year. So I'm sure we'll get it at some point in 2023, or at least when it makes sense. They don't have to go back to it anytime soon. Unless Danielson leaves or retires, or Omega leaves or retires, they can always go back to it again. And at the very least, we got it once, if nothing else. Uh, I think we got at least two more questions here. Let's see. Or one, actually one final question. From uh, at E13A. Did you hear about, not wrestling related, but did you hear about the report of movie studios now being liable to get sued for quote-unquote deceptive movie trailers? I did see that. I saw that the the thumbnail of the Avengers Infinity War trailer where Hulk, where Hulk in Hulk form was in the trailer, although he wasn't in Hulk form in the actual movie. I had a conversation with someone about that soon after, and I think it kind of... I think it kind of is more about people that they advertise certain people for movies that aren't in the actual movie. And the example they cited was that movie yesterday, that Beatles movie that came out a few years ago that someone was shown in the trailers for the movie but wasn't actually in the movie or maybe they cut their role. That is false advertising. That is deceptive. The stuff that they take out because they don't want people to be spoiled, like for example, the No Way Home trailer where they took out the other Spider-Men because they didn't want people to be spoiled. I mean, I would sue if they did spoil that in advance in the trailer. So I don't think that's really, I don't think that's uh, what they're talking about. I think it's more about, oh, we promise this person will be in it and stuff like that. And then they're not in it. If it's something as small as like, oh, this is a scene that ended up getting cut. That's not really like, who cares? You're not going to go see a movie for one scene for the most part, unless it's a fucking rapping kangaroo from Kangaroo Jack. I'm still upset about that. I would sue for that from 20 years ago. But beyond that, though, unless it's an actor that they say is in the movie who isn't actually in the movie, then I don't really think uh, it's, it's going to mean too much in the long run. And that was the last question, guys. That was the last question of 2022. Thank you guys so much for your great questions this week and every single week in 2022 and every single year for the last nine years. And get this, 2023 is going to mark 10 years of hashtag AskGSM. So I don't know what we're going to do. This is episode 474. Uh, we'll hit 500, I assume, before then. The um, 500th or the 10 year anniversary of the show is in July. So, I, assuming we, we do it every week until then, I, I never take weeks off from hashtag. Um, 
we'll probably just do a big 500 celebration, have it be a live episode, do something cool for it, and then we'll hit the 10-year anniversary mark soon after. Uh, that's in 25 weeks from now, so I don't know what that would be exactly. Maybe it is close to July and we can, I don't know, we'll figure it out, I guess. But the 500th episode anniversary is coming up this year, as well as the 10-year anniversary of hashtag AskGSM. So that is pretty fucking cool. Thank you guys, as always, for your great questions and support of the show. I cannot say that enough. If you want to send in a question to the show, you could do so by tweeting me on the Twitter machine at WrestleRant with the hashtag AskGSM. Find me on Facebook as well, facebook.com backslash graham.gsm.matthews. Drop a comment on the post I usually put up on Tuesday nights, if not in the wall itself. And last but certainly not least, drop your question down below in the comment section on this very video. I'll include your question in next week's edition. Have an awesome one, guys. Enjoy your new year. Have a great rest of your holiday week. I'm Graham GSM Matthews, and I'll catch your ass down the road in 2023.